we stop? Yeah. Let's try another one. Apparently you ran into it. Is that how far that went? Yep. That's why you gotta be careful when you're walking around in the desert. I mean, this hole over here somehow connected with that hole and connected to this thing, which is half, half fenced off. But I swear to God, this thing's like 100 feet deep. Actually, where we're standing is probably not a good idea because if this collapses, yeah, it would be SOL. Yeah. Safety first. Hey, sightseers. Sightseeing Sally here. Marty's around. He's over by the truck. Distracted. Distracted by that. We are out in Arizona, down in the southeastern corner of Arizona to be exact. And we're scoping out a couple of ghost towns, a couple of forgotten towns down in the Tombstone area. And so far, what we've come across are some ruins. I believe they happen to be ruins from a ghost town, a town that was incorporated, oh, back in the 1900s, the beginning of the 1900s, by the name of Cortland. Now, we just passed through another area where Gleason, which is an old ghost town, but Gleason happens to be all on private property, so we didn't stop there. We're more or less scoping out the places where we can walk around and see things up close and personal. We may go back and see if we can get permission from the people who own Gleason to walk around the ruins there, but so far, this is what we've come across. The remains of a couple of buildings, which I don't know what they are, what they used to be, but let's take a closer look and see what's here. Now that I'm up closer, it almost looks like it was two separate buildings. Like this is the foundation or the remains of one building. And then over here is another, as you can see at the outer wall here, unless they were somehow connected up above, which is always possible, but they look too, too different to be the same. So my guess is two separate buildings. You got the old cactus there right in front of the building. Something I noticed is they're just so narrow. I mean, I don't know, the back end of that building, it's maybe 10 feet across. Unfortunately, the graffiti gang was in here and marking this all up. I don't know why people have to do that. I mean, come on. This would look so much better without all that crap on the wall. I mean, why do you gotta come in here and deface this stuff? If you look off in the distance, you can see I'm not alone. We're in open range here, so the cows are coming in. They smell me. They might come and check me out. Well, I guess I'll see what Marty's up to and we'll probably continue on down the road, down to Cortland. So I pick my way through the, through the cacti and scrub brush and whatever else these bushes are. Obviously, that being around here, I don't know, know all the names, but I'm gonna learn them. No doubt about it. I'm gonna figure out what, what that is. Here's another old building. This one's a lot more intact than the other ruins. Again, not sure what it used to be, if it was a business or a residence or what. I'm thinking this might have actually been the jail. Check this out. In this room here, they got bars on the walls, or on the walls, on the windows, and they're what, like a whole six to eight inches thick. And I'll tell you what, it has a really rank, nasty odor in here. Something like really old and, and icky. 
There was tile floor on the bottom here at one time, but it looks like a lot of it was busted out. And then up above, the ceilings were reinforced with metal, metal bars going across. So I'm thinking this had to have been the jail. And this could have been like the spot where they put you when you're really naughty in this solitary confinement space. That's what I'm thinking. And of course, like I said, the graffiti gang in here. And if you go in this other room here, you can see the windows where the bars were, but somebody obviously was ripping them or pulling them out and busted up the concrete. So the space is a little bit wider than what it was on the other side, but I'm thinking this definitely was, was an old jail. And then we've got this here, could have been like a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Interesting though. If you look up in the ceiling here, there's a round hole. Of that might have been where they had a stovepipe going up out through the roof, or if that was just like their ventilation system or what. Definitely older and wow, the walls are super thick and reinforced with metal bars. So yeah, that would be my guess was the old jail. Then across the street, I think there might be some ruins just like the very, very uh, little bit. It's here, take a quick walk, walk over there. Right there. Whatever was here is gone. No longer exists. Sadly, just a couple of concrete blocks with some metal sticking up out of it. Here, let me pan so you can see. There's the old jail. The jail on the outskirts of town. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. And over here, it looks like we've got more foundations, more remnants here deteriorating in the land. Quite large concrete slab there. Well, from what I know about Cortland, it was a much larger town than the Gleason, which is up the road from here. And I apologize for the sound of the truck being revved up in the background. Marty's concerned that something's wrong with the turbo. So yeah, we're continuing to be plagued with truck problems here in this trip. Anyways, so I'm walking around here, kind of trying to trying to figure out what this used to be. And this here is rather intriguing. What does that look like to you? I know what I'm kind of thinking it looks like, but I'm curious what you guys all think that is. Let me know in the comments section below what you make of these four pieces of wood stabbed in the ground like that. Wah, wah, wah. So we drove nine tenths of a mile and ended up being private property. The driveway was marked private property. So either somebody bought, bought Cortland or somebody was making a joke, made up some fake sign, put us on a wild goose chase. Apparently we're not getting to see Cortland up close today which really just kind of sucks for lack of better words, because it seems like all the ghost towns here in Arizona are privately owned. And I don't know, 
how can anybody get out and enjoy them if if nobody's letting anybody else see them and they're just letting the buildings decay what's the point okay anywho quit complaining that pretty much wraps up this adventure unless we can find something else to do well instead of turning around we decided to take a drive up to pierce which is a semi-restored ghost town so not totally abandoned not totally a ghost town it has people living here but it does have some of the old historic buildings this is a church that's on the national register of historic places unfortunately we can't go in it says no trespassing wah, wah, wah. yeah it's kind of been a bit of a bust of a trip but let me turn the camera around so you can get a better look of the old church the name of it is Our Lady of Victory Catholic Church from 1893 I think is the date on there and it looks like they may have replaced the glass at some point glass up there that looks a little bit more original I'm assuming and it looks like they've painted it because of course I don't think it was brightly painted yellow back in the day. Until next time, this is Sightseeing Sally. Special thanks goes out to all our fellow sightseers here on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible.